Okay, so if you wanna airbrush nails, one of the first things you need, of course, is an airbrush. And this is a Dyer and Chandler Nail Air Airbrush. And it has an internal paint cup, which holds small amounts of paint, which is good because you only need small amounts of paint to airbrush nails. When you have a smaller cup, that keeps you from possibly wasting paint. I have a one fifth horsepower airbrush compressor. It's relatively strong. I like to use thicker paints. I don't wanna to have to thin my paints down. So I try to use a compressor that's strong enough to push the paints that I wanna use. Has a moisture trap on it. This helps to keep moisture from building up in the hose, which can spray out of the airbrush at the worst possible time and totally mess up your airbrush design has a pressure regulator gauge. I just turn it all the way up for maximum pressure. I have a nail practice stand here. The little uh, stands are magnetic. I put some poster tack on the bottom of it to affix it to the table so it doesn't really move a lot. Then I use some of this uh, pink poster tack to hold the nails in place on top of the little nail stand. So I'm just gonna put a few nails onto this stand to demonstrate on real quick. Okay, so uh, when it comes to clear coats, you can use water-based polishes, which are good because most airbrush paint is water-based, so the water-based polish works well with it. You can use uh, one coat for the base coat and then two for top coat. Also use gel clear for top coat and base coat. Just the regular gel base coat, the kind you have to wipe off the sticky layer with the alcohol because sometimes a no wipe a clear coat for the gel is too slick and shiny to airbrush on. And you could run into some problems trying to airbrush, like with your stencil might scratch the paint and stuff like that. So it's best to just use the regular, I have to wipe off the sticky layer uh, as a base coat. Also a good thing to have is some of the latex uh, skin barrier. Uh, to put around the edge of the cuticle. So that way, if you're doing a whole nail airbrush design and the paint gets on the skin in the cuticle, it's just easy to peel right off. But airbrush paint is water-based, so it does wash off easily with soap and water or a little cotton swab with some cleaner. You can just go around the edge of the nail. So I'm just gonna start by putting on some base coat onto my nail tips here. So uh, the paints I'm gonna start off with are some Createx White, uh, Createx Raspberry, and then some of this Badger brand Magenta, which I'm gonna mix with the white and I'll show you uh, how I do that. So here's my airbrush. I'm gonna put a little bit of white paint in it. Just make sure my trigger's nice and loose. Sometimes when you first pull out your airbrush, the trigger is kind of sticky. 
So I just need a couple drops of white paint. Okay, so when you wanna airbrush, you press the trigger down for the air, and then you pull the trigger back to release the paint. And the further back you pull the trigger, the more paint comes out of the airbrush. So as you see, I'm gonna push down and then I'm pulling back. And when I pull back a lot, it's really spraying out a bunch of paint. And you really won't need to do that with airbrushing nails. Hardly ever will you need to pull back the trigger all the way back when you're airbrushing nails. Usually you just wanna have a nice, uh, smooth airflow. Uh, you're gently coating the nail in layers, not trying to get it to be all super white in one swipe because you want the paint to go on kind of relatively dry looking. If it does look kind of wet and shiny, just push your trigger forward so that only air comes out of the airbrush and dry off that area and then just keep on going. Okay, now I'm gonna demonstrate how easy it is to do French designs with the airbrush. So I'm gonna start with this tiger stripe stencil and spray on some easy tiger stripes. And as you see, I'm starting from the bottom. I'm not just randomly spraying over the stencil. I wanna kind of like fill in the areas of the design as I move up the stencil. That way my design will be nice and crisp and the lines will be nice and clean. And so now I'm just gonna add a little bit of the shadow with the white, just to fill it in a little bit. Okay, so now I want to make a light pink. So I'm gonna take the white that's left over on my airbrush and mix a little bit of this Badger brand magenta in there. And to mix it, I'll press down on the trigger for the air, and then I'm gonna put my finger over the tip so that when I pull the trigger back, it pulls the needle out of the way of the fluid nozzle to allow the air to push back into the airbrush and mix my paints for me. And so now I have a cute pink, nice light pink that I'm gonna use. And I'm just gonna spray this nail with the light pink, kind of in the same manner that I did with the white. Uh, just uh, smooth and easy, not trying to get it all on there at one time, just building up the layers. Of course, it's a little bit easier to build up, I think, than just the plain white because it's got some color in it, I guess. I don't know. But as you see, this is quickly covering up the nail, a little bit quicker than I did with just the white. Okay, so now I need to clean my airbrush. So to clean your airbrush, you need some water, some spray cleaner. I usually use like some 409, a little toothbrush, soft toothbrush, and then some kind of receptacle to spray into. Um, you can use a children's paintbrush cup. It works good because it has this little concave shape that helps keep the splash and splatter contained. Um, but really, I use that, and, but then I also like to use just like a jar, a canning jar that has the separate lid and the ring. So um, I get rid of the lid part and then use some plastic wrap 
and put it over the jar and leave um, enough space on the side for me to uh, spray into it. So I'll just yeah push this back a little bit and then put my ring on top. Oh, wait a minute, I almost forgot. Um, I like to put a little piece of paper towel in there uh, to keep down on the splatter. Even if you're using this like little paint cup, whatever you're using, the little piece of paper towel in there to help contain the splatter a little bit. So put my plastic wrap on here. And then uh, put my ring on to hold it in place. And if you don't have like a ring, you can always just put some plastic wrap over it and just use a little rubber band. So um, first I'm gonna start off with the water. And what I wanna do is just spray water into the paint cup, the paint reservoir inside the airbrush, cause I wanna knock out as much of this pink paint as I can with the water. So I'm not just spraying more paint into the airbrush and that just makes it easier to clean. So trying to get a good shot here. So I'm just gonna spray a bunch of water in there and as you see, I'm just trying to kick all the pink paint out. So now I'm gonna start spraying the water out of the airbrush. And I'm just gonna kind of spray it in the same manner as when I'm airbrushing, uh, just kind of gently. I don't wanna just like pull the trigger all the way back and blast the water out because I want the water or the cleaner or whatever I'm using to come in contact with the surfaces really good to break down that paint and clean it out. So I'll alternate with some water and then I might use some cleaner and you know alternate between the two. But the more water you use, that's just the more money you can save on cleaner. So you just spray it out gently. And this paint has been sitting in here like while I talk generally. You know, you haven't had the paint in here for very long and it comes out really easily. But when it is kind of stubborn, you just want to get in there with your gentle brush and you know gently go over the tip of the needle because paint builds up there. So give it a little scrub with the brush. Then I'm probably going to use some cleaner now and then spray that in there and then run that through the airbrush as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna start off with some of this uh, fluorescent raspberry paint from Createx. It's a bright pink color. And so first I'm gonna give it a little test spray on my glove like I always do anytime you're airbrushing, you always wanna give it a little test spray before you spray on the nail. So I'm gonna do this white nail first. So kind of what I'm gonna show at first is how you can do like the ombre effect super easy with the airbrush. You just kind of build it up at the bottom and then kind of like feather it up a little bit as you get towards the middle to give you a more gradient effect. But also what I'm showing is how it can be harder to build up a color over white over a white base than it can over a pink base. Because as you see, I'm working kind of hard trying to get this color to be as uh, dark and as bright as I want it to be over this white paint. So that's why sometimes if you know that you're just gonna use a bright pink, you might wanna start off with a light pink as a base. And when I spray on the pink nail, you'll see the raspberry color really comes alive a lot quicker over a pink base than it does over this white base. Okay, so now I'm gonna spray the raspberry over this pink. And as you can see, like it's really coming alive a lot quicker. I don't have to work as hard to get the color to come up. So on this one, I'm just gonna do just a plain ombre. And it was a lot easier to get my pink nice and dark and bright over a light pink than it was over a white base coat of color.
Okay, so now I'm just gonna spray some of this raspberry on a clear tip, just so you can see how a lot of the um, airbrush paints uh, will have kind of like a transparency to them. So a lot of times you do need uh, some type of uh, base color underneath to really see the true hue of the color. Unless you wanna kind of go for this uh, clear look, for instance, this would be really cute. Like when you put the clear polish on there, it would have kind of like the shiny, kind of jelly kind of nail look. So yeah, that could be cute on its own if you wanted to, but this is just to show you how the color would look without some kind of base underneath. Depending on the color, the shade of the color, it might still have like a transparency to it like this does. Even though I keep spraying and spraying and spraying, you can still kind of see my uh, pink nail tack underneath there because it's not all the way opaque. Okay, so when you're using your stencil, you can just lay the stencil flat on the nail. You don't have to worry about it scratching. And then again, you don't wanna just randomly just be spraying all over the stencil. You wanna kind of follow your design, start in one area and work your way. Because like for instance, this one, the nail is not flat. So as I move up the design, I'm gonna need to uh, kind of angle or the stencil down a little bit so it lays flat as I get towards the top of the stencil. And I'm not gonna wanna try to reline up the bottom of the stencil to match where it was before. So that's why I'm kind of gradually working my way up, filling in sections at a time so I don't have to come back to a section that I already sprayed. That way my design is crisp and clean and the lines are clear and the design looks good and not all foggy or blurry. Okay, this time I'm gonna spray some yellow over the pink so you can see how the colors interact with a lighter color going over a darker color. And as you can see, I'm spraying, but the yellow just doesn't seem to be really very yellow on top of this pink. In fact, it ends up looking kind of orange no matter how much I spray. So now that I've got a little yellow, I mean a little white mixed in with my yellow, I'm just gonna spray it back over the same area so you can see the difference. Now the white did not really tone down the yellow that much because the yellow is a super bright color and I only used a dab of white. So the color is not like faded out or like really light like the pink was. It's still actually a pretty bright yellow. But if I did want it to even be brighter, I would just go back over this again with a little bit more yellow. So um, now I'm just gonna spray this nail yellow and I'll show how some colors do work well over other colors. Like I'll spray orange, I'll do some flames, I'll spray some orange, and then I'll also do some red and you'll see it works just fine. Cause I guess, cause they're kind of in the same color family and we're going from lighter to darker. Although lighter to darker does not always mean that your colors are gonna still look good. And I'll demonstrate that as well later. So on this yellow nail, I'm just going to spray some orange flames and it's gonna look like orange over the yellow.
Okay, so now I'm gonna spray a little red flame. And as you see, the red is its true color on top of the orange and the yellow. And then also you see how also I'm spraying, I'm you know, purposely moving around the design of the stencil and not just randomly just spraying back and forth over the whole stencil. Taking my time and working around the design so that my lines and my design are crisp and clear. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is show how, just because I'm using a darker color, it's not necessarily gonna cover over a lighter color in the way I want it to. So for instance, this turquoise, I'm gonna spray it over the pink and it starts off kind of turning into like a purplish blue color. And then as I do keep spraying, it does get more and more blue, but it's not really like a pretty blue. It's just kind of like muddied up by the pink color underneath. So what I wanna do is, like before, either spray on white first and then spray on the blue color I want. Or like I did with the pink and the yellow, I can just mix a little bit of white in with it, which will lighten the color, but then it will look nice over my other color. It will look good, like a really cute blue on top of my pink. Okay, so I've got my blue all mixed up and it is a little bit lighter than what's in the bottle, but I'm gonna go ahead and spray it over the area of the nail that I want to cover. And um, as you see, since I mixed the white into it, it's got full coverage. It's uh, going over the pink and the previous blue with no problems. Now the color is lighter, and if of course I did want the darker blue color, I would just come back after and then just put the dark blue straight into my airbrush and just spray it over. And then so also, like if you don't wanna go around trying to mix colors in your airbrush, cause until you get used to it, it can be a little messy. Paint will splatter a little bit till you kinda get it figured out what works best for you. You can just get small bottles. I do have lots of little half ounce bottles that I mix paints in that I have just ready to go. Like my yellow, I have a little bottle of yellow all ready to go. And then of course I'll keep this blue around and I'll have that ready to go for, so for whenever I need it. Okay, so now I'm gonna use a little black. Black covers everything. You won't have any of the problems with black, doesn't matter what color you're spraying over, black always works.
Okay, so when you finish airbrushing, the paint is pretty much dry to the touch, as you see. So now I'm gonna put some top coat on. I'm gonna use some no wipe top coat. 